All right, welcome back. This is All Back Tutors. In this video, we are still looking at PC components, but under this tutorial, we'll be considering secondary storage. In our previous videos, we looked at primary storage, where we saw things like RAM, we saw ROM, and we were able to differentiate between both RAM and ROM. One of which we said that RAM is volatile, but while ROM is non-volatile. Now, but in this video, we'll be considering the secondary storage proper. Now, you will agree with me that one of the deficiencies of primary storage is storage capacity. If you recall, we talked about three um, factors we use in measuring storage device. We talked about the access time, talked about the storage capacity, and the cost. I made mention that they have faster access time compared to secondary storage. How be it? Their storage, their storage capacity is low. Like for a RAM, is two gig, four gig, eight gig. But in terms of hard disk, it's something like like five hundred gig, one terabyte, two terabytes. So the size of the power storage is insufficient to accommodate the data we want to store. Again, we talked about um, um, primary storage like RAM being volatile in the sense that once power goes off, all that we have will be lost. But secondary storage is non-volatile in the sense that it can store the data for subsequent time. We need The need for large volume of data to be stored as well as to be stored for subsequent usage What about secondary storage devices. Now, secondary storage devices is also known as auxiliary memory or external memory. As I said earlier, it is non-volatile, and this, um, which means that data can be stored or can be retained when power is off, and this is stored external to the computer system. Now, secondary storage are classified based on the way information stored can be accessed. Now, when we store data in, in, storage, in secondary storage devices, there are two ways for, that can access those data. Number one is sequential or serial access. And number two is direct or random access. Now, let's take a look at them one after the other. <clears throat> in sequential access, it simply means that the data stores in memory can only be accessed in sequence, the way in which they were stored. For example, if you store data in disk one, memory two, memory three, memory four, memory five, six, seven, you cannot just jump from memory one to seven. You have to move from memory one to memory two, memory three. If you recall our magnetic tape, those days we had a tape that used to record music. If you want to play a song in track seven, you need to fast forward or play from track one to track two to track three up to track seven before it could be played. Because you cannot jump up to track seven from one to from one to seven. No, it doesn't work that way because it's sequential. Data can only be accessed in sequence in which it has been stored. So the two examples we have there is magnetic tape and punch paper tape. The other examples though, you can check online. In the case of direct access, which is the opposite of sequential access, data stored can be accessed in any order. In other words, as we have data in memory 1 to memory 10, and you choose to access memory 1 and memory 10, you can have direct access to any memory location without following the sequence in which this data were stored. For example, our CD plate, if we want to play track 1, we'll just press 1 and it will play. If we want to play track 5, just press 5 and it will play. Unlike in our sequential access, whereby we need to play from track 1 to track 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6. So our CD players is more works with direct access. So an example we have there is a hard disk our example we have is our optical disc, which is our CD player. Now, one advantage of secondary of secondary um, of secondary storage is that it can store more files. That's the capacity, sorry, capacity, as well as the cost is less compared to primary memory. But in the case of primary memory, it has a faster access time. The CPU can easily retrieve data from primary memory down from 
hard disk or, or that from secondary memory. So the data stored on primary memory are, are, are stored in secondary memory are being transferred to primary memory when the need arises. Now let's look at the primary memory and secondary memory. Let's see the advantages and disadvantages. Now, as we said earlier, that storage device can be classified or or, or, or exemplify through three features. Number one is the access time, the time taken to access these memory locations. Number two is the storage capacity, the size of the storage, the amount of data that, that storage can hold. The number three is the cost, the amount in which that storage can was purchased. Then in terms of access time, we have established that primary storage like RAM have a faster access time than secondary storage. We said earlier that a CPU can read data fast from RAM than from the hard disk. So most times, data on hard disk can be transferred to RAM for subsequent uh, reference. In terms of storage capacity, primary storage has less capacity. Like we have 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, maybe now 12 gig. But in terms of secondary storage, we have about one terabyte, two terabyte, as many as possible. So with that, you could see that it could accommodate large number of data compared to primary storage. Now, in terms of cost, primary storage is more expensive compared to secondary storage. So you could see that secondary storage has a bigger capacity as well as less price. But in terms of primary storage, it has a faster access time. So with this now, when you're making your choice, you could know the one you could go for. Now having established that, so in our next video, we'll be looking at the software components of a computer system. If you want to learn more, please hit the subscription button, subscribe to our channel, stay tuned, see you in our next video. Thank you.